the authors provide a sketch of the curriculum integration process. It starts with the study of the student's needs. They argue in their paper that students' needs today are various and are different than what are met by most course books alone. They talk about the need for teachers to add to the materials in the course book in order to provide units that are really relevant to the students. So their approach is not to throw out the course book, but to add to it gradually, little by little, based on students' needs. Now their project doesn't talk about technology at all. That's what we need to add in for our course. And so in talking about each of these 10 steps, I'm going to do just that. I'll add the technology component. The first three steps are what I would call planning. This is where teachers look at the student's needs. What are the student's needs with respect to both language and technology use? In our analysis, we need to think about the fact that a lot of language is used through technology today. And so we need to consider language and technology needs for students' communication. For the second step, preparing the goals and objectives, we need to ask this question. What language and technology skills will students learn as a result of the unit? So that's the basic goal setting. Third, developing test tasks. In their approach, they have the test tasks developed early on in the process. The test tasks allow the teachers to see what would be considered evidence of success of the new units. So to develop the test tasks, the question is, what tasks will be used to evaluate students' accomplishments? And I would add, how will technology be used for these tasks to make them relevant to instruction? The next two steps I would call analysis, identifying language and skills. What are the language and technology skills required for completing the task? These are analyzed by having teachers try out the tasks. This is a really important aspect of the process because the teachers develop the assessment tasks and then they actually do the assessment tasks themselves. This produces some very concrete knowledge about what's needed to be able to do these tasks, both with respect to language needs and the technology skills that are needed. The next step then is sequencing. In what sequence should the teacher use these key components of language and technology skills? Once the skills are identified, how can they be divided up and taught gradually across a week or two weeks or however long that unit is going to last? The next two steps I would call development and use. What learning materials are needed to teach the unit? Materials include the language and activities needed as well as the technologies. Collaboration is critically important in developing the materials. And this is something that the authors emphasize, and we are going to hear our call expert emphasize the same thing, that collaboration among teachers is extremely important. The next step is teaching. Teachers try them out. How do the materials actually work in class? Teachers use the materials and note how students respond to them. An important aspect of the teaching in this model is that teachers are not only teaching, but also carefully observing how the students respond. This is something that we do pretty naturally in the classroom, but in this case, these observations are going to be used later in this process. Teaching isn't the last step. It's only one part of the overall process. 